Every so often I like to throw a plumbing component into the mix just to add a bit of variety. And this time it's the Mini Rester Water Hammer Arrester by Sue Chief and actually made in the USA. And I am going to be opening this, but before I open it, I've got the pipe cutter here in readiness. Let me explain its purpose. So let's just focus down onto here momentarily. If you have a water pipe feeding something like, say, and here's a prime culprit, washing machines, uh, where they use solenoid valves, then what happens when the machine starts filling up is water starts flowing along the pipe, and then the solenoid valve closes, and it tends to close with a bit of a thump, and suddenly it tries to stop that column of water that's got a good bit of momentum flowing, and you end up with a percussive thud from the uh, pipework. So there's a couple of ways of uh, dealing with this. One of them is to add a pressure vessel where you've got a sort of chamber attached to the pipe, which can be a small one, it can be a big one. And these chambers sometimes have a diaphragm inside them. Uh, well, they usually, the, most of the sort of pressure vessels have the diaphragm and a Schrader valve to actually fill this section with air. This is rubber, and as supplied, it was slightly pressurised, bowed down, and when the water fills up, it goes up, it equalises, and then any change in pressure will be buffered by that air like a spring. Incidentally, if you have one of these, and they're commonly used in water heating systems to allow uh, thermal expansion of the water in things like heating systems or you'd like radiator heating systems or like just plain hot water. Uh, sometimes these are used to allow expansion of the water as it heats up. If you have problems with the safety valve, which is just designed to just release the water going, then if you've got an old one of these, a quick test to do is just to take the cap off the Schrader valve and just press it in very gently in the end. And if you get a very slight hiss of air, release it immediately. That means there is air inside it. If water squirts out, then that diaphragm is perforated and this is full of water and is useless, which sometimes happens. And that's it's a, it's a cheap enough item to replace. The other thing, and this you're going to have to correct me, the plumbing expert's going to have to correct me here. The other thing that used to be fairly common in America was apparently a T-piece with just a dead end bit of pipe. And that has been kind of stopped now. And the idea was that ambient water that, uh, that come into your house usually as little tiny air bubbles. And those air bubbles would gradually displace uh, water out of this. So there was your air pocket. And there were two theories of why this was discontinued. One is that it didn't really work that well, that, that there wasn't that much air in water. And the other is that, you know, it was a dead end pipe and you're not supposed to have dead ends of pipes because the water can go stagnant in them. But having said that, what's happening in here then? Because this water's continually getting pulsed up and down if there is air in there. But th this is the mini restaurant. It tries to get around these problems. So this one goes in and I don't know what's inside this. It could be a little cylinder uh, with a spring behind it or it could be a bladder. Uh, let's draw another one for that. Just a bladder filled with just air or even granules, compressible granules to actually just allow some sort of buffering of the water. But anyway, the only way to find that out is to open it. So let's open it. Oh, incidentally, I did consider experimenting. I got a bit of 50 millimeter acrylic tube because that is what we have here, which is an absolutely perfect fit onto one of these press fit valves. And I did consider actually putting this in the pipework uh, and just seeing... Does this fill with, I mean, it would obviously it would start initially with water in it. But the question is, would it uh, maintain that uh, water in there um, with fresh supply of air? That should it say that air in there with a fresh supply of air from the water line itself? Or would it gradually just basically displace all the water out and that would be it? But the downside to this is the place I want to put it is very inaccessible. It requires clearing out a room and also... If this goes wrong, I'll have a huge fountain in the house. That's not a great idea. However, back to the subject in hand. Let's take a look inside this. Now, if this is a plunger with a spring, I think the best place to open it is at the top. This was bought from eBay a while ago when I was looking at different options for uh, solving a water hammer problem. I ended up with a similar one, but not this one. Uh, and it didn't work. So that wasn't great. So let's uh, circle this round, tighten it, circle it. If this is going to take ages, if it's if it's quite thick copper, 
It shouldn't take ages. This is not a standard size. I thought this was going to be a 22 millimeter, which is our standard pipework size. 22 and 15. So this was bought second hand. I'd get the feeling it hadn't worked for the people that bought it. Certainly the new ones are fairly expensive because it is a sort of like custom made specialist component. I could see why they used just a stub of copper in the past. Copper pipe, because that would have been a lot cheaper. I think we're getting there. Okay. There is, I think that is just a diaphragm, right? Tell you what, I'm going to try and get this out. What could I lever that out with? Is it just a sliding diaphragm? A sliding cylinder inside, so it does just trap the pocket of air. That would be super simple. Uh, let me just find a suitable pair of pliers and grab this. Uh, this, because I, I'm going to have to file that off because it's not going to come past this lip. One moment, please. So I guess uh, I've misplaced my pipe reamer then. Okay. Let's uh, carefully scrape around the inside because it's just not coming out. It will come out. I will make it come out. It will come out regardless of what happens, even if I have to cut the pipe down here as well. That's what's going to happen. So let's uh, hike this out. I can hear it sliding inside. There it is. It's a puck with two O-rings on it and uh, plenty of silicone grease. And it really is just a little, uh, let's see, is there anything else down there? Nope, that's straight down into the pipe there. So it is really just, a, it's pretty much uh, that uh, system of the trapped here, but instead it's got that little puck right down inside it to actually act as a buffer. This here, I wonder if, I wonder if they've, uh, is this just where they've, Oh, they've maybe just spun this. I don't know if that looks like sputter as if there's welded, welding on that. I wonder if they've uh, put this in. I'm not really sure what they've done here to actually close this off. I think uh, if they put it in, they'd most likely close that end off. But maybe there was a hole in here and they uh, used that to pressurise air against this to or make sure it was just pushed right down to the bottom. And then they put the top on. So, well, they, they welded that. I'm not really sure. It's quite strange. It might just be the centre for a turning, uh, for uh, spinning the metal to actually shape it. I'm not really sure. But there we have it. Uh, it doesn't work now. Could be fixed, I suppose. But that's it. Uh, interesting. Not really what I was expecting. I thought there was going to be a spring to make sure it always stayed at bottom. But I guess, ultimately, the air is the spring. So there we have it. The... Uh, the inside of the Sioux Chief Mini Rester. Very simple, but presumably effective in the right applications.